My name is Joshua Wright. I started working with cyanotypes in early 2018, but I really didn't understand what was happening in the chemical process, or why UV light turns a yellow-green liquid into the beautiful Prussian blue. I set out to better understand that process. The steps for making cyanotype are beautifully simple, enough so that anyone can get started with little more than a bucket of water. We mix ferric ammonium citrate with potassium ferrocyanide, paint it on a surface, expose it to UV light, wash, and we get Prussian blue. But what is actually happening here? First, let's talk about the magic of ferric ammonium citrate, aka the green stuff. If you buy from Photographer's formulary, this is the A solution. The chemical formula is complex, but we can simplify it down to one really important element, iron. To understand how cyanotype works, you need to understand the fundamental property of iron. In the cyanotype printing process, iron exists in one of two forms. Ferric iron, also known as Fe3 or iron 3, or ferrous iron, also known as Fe2 or iron 2. The difference between ferric and ferrous iron has to do with the number of electrons forming the iron element. With ferric iron, the iron element has lost three electrons. With ferrous iron, the iron element has lost two electrons. Now, that explanation didn't really make things more clear for me either, but stick with me for another minute. If you're a visual learner, this graphic may help. Ferrous iron, that is iron 3, is pictured on the left, and ferric iron, iron 2, is pictured on the right. Ferric iron looks a lot like rust, while ferrous iron looks like iron. I kept forgetting which iron was which, so I came up with a memory association. Ferrous iron has an O in it, like the word two. Ferric iron doesn't. Ferrous iron is iron two. Ferric iron is iron three. One last and very important thing you need to know about iron. When you expose ferric iron to UV light, you produce ferrous iron. This chemical transformation is the fundamental building block to cyanotype and all other siderotype printing processes. To illustrate, let's pretend you coated a piece of paper with just ferric ammonium citrate, e.g. the photographer formulary's A bottle, and forgot to add the ferric ferrocyanide. When you expose the ferric ammonium citrate to a UV light source, the ferric iron transforms into ferrous iron, iron 2. This change also produces a reaction with the other chemicals, causing the carbon and oxygen in the citrate to produce carbon dioxide, or CO2, which leaves as a gas. After removing it from the UV source and washing it, you have ferrous iron, iron 2, left behind in the paper fibers. By itself, this presents a problem. The ferrous iron is considered unstable. It will react with oxygen in the air and return to become ferric iron eventually. By itself, the ferric ammonium citrate doesn't leave behind a persistent image. We need something else to produce an indelible image left behind in the paper fibers. Next, let's talk about the magic of ferric ferrocyanide, aka the not green stuff. If you buy from Fertogler's formulary, this is the B solution. Like the ferric ammonium citrate, the A solution, the chemical formula is complex, but there is a simple way to think about this. Ferric ferrocyanide is almost nearly, not quite, Prussian blue, aka ferric ferrocyanide. What does it take to convert ferric ferrocyanide into Prussian blue slash ferric ferrocyanide? We just need to add some ferrous iron. In order for ferric ferrocyanide to become ferric ferrocyanide, e.g. Prussian blue, it needs to gain an electron. So we mix the ferric ammonium citrate, the A solution, with potassium ferrocyanide, the B solution. The potassium part is an ion needed to transfer electrons. And we expose it to a UV light source. Under the UV light, the ferric iron becomes ferrous iron. Just like we saw with the ferric ammonium citrate, the carbon and oxygen react to produce CO2, which leaves as a gas. The citrate donates an electron to produce ferric ferrocyanide, e.g. Prussian blue, which is left behind in the paper fibers. That's it. Ferric iron, that is Fe3, with UV light produces ferrous iron, Fe2. The ferric iron in ferric ammonium citrate produces ferrous iron and carbon dioxide under UV light. The ferrous iron interacts with the ferric ferrocyanide, 
contributing an electron to produce ferric ferrocyanide. Ferric ferrocyanide is the amazing Prussian blue left behind on your print. Now, if you're still confused, please let me know what confuses you. I'd love to hear from you. Email or Instagram are great. Also, please keep posting your cyanotype prints, good or bad. We're all learning this together.